everybody, welcome back to Leafy Life. I'm Susie and this channel is my space to share my love of houseplants. In this house, I am tending to leafy life, reaching green and bending toward the light. Leafy So today I have a parcel from Grow Tropicals to open, so I thought you might like to see what's inside. It's not going to take long, it's a bite-sized video because it's only three little plants, but it's a bit of a treat um, and I just wanted to show you what's inside. I've just got some nice hot tea and a square of chocolate and a digestive, um, but yeah, let's get on with it. So here's the box. I've been keeping an eye on uh, the website for Grow Tropicals because they have some really interesting peperomia listed, but not yet. They're like in, in progress, like what do they call it, like in propagation. I can't remember how they're listing it as, but they've got all these enticing different names of peperomia that are not ones you'd normally find in in most houseplant shops or most, most websites. Um, and yeah, I don't know when they're going to be available, but they're very enticing. But um, I, I did buy one peperomia from them and a couple of Hoya. I'm just kind of getting into Hoya now. I know that's a bit late to the game, but I just think with plants, you just, you kind of fall in love with plants when you do, you know, like whether it's a popular plant or not, you either, you will either love it or not. And when I first started growing houseplants, I, I didn't know about Hoya. I, I knew nothing about them and they didn't, when I sort of encountered them, they didn't exactly float my boat straight away, but I'm gradually starting to appreciate them, the way they grow and just, yeah, their visuals and the ones that I have, I absolutely love and I've been getting to know them. So um, now that I'm more familiar with what they need from me and what they like, um, I feel more confident about getting more. And I wouldn't say that I would want every Hoya in the world. I, I just think yeah, it's the same with a lot of plants except peperomia. Um, that I think like with philodendron, there I love a lot of philodendron, but I wouldn't say I would like and appreciate all of them. Um, so it's just kind of, yeah it's it's about leaf shape and color and i do like a lot of planar plants um and i do feel like a kind of typical hoya with that kind of long pointed leaf is definitely yeah definitely my cup of tea so i've just been kind of looking out for ones that i like the look of okay oh ooh. oh <laughs> oh these look great i don't know what to get out first let's go with the peperomia because that's the main reason i was doing the order and then um this is actually a mother's day treat i have two children um i think mother's day is, is this weekend isn't it i've already taken my mum out for a treat we went to see some horses um and do some grooming of some big proper proper horses which was really fun um and we went out to lunch um, but yeah, this is a little a little treat for me, um, which I greatly appreciate. <clears throat> oh my gosh, that's beautiful! It's so green and gorgeous. Oh, I need to look at that some more. Oh my goodness, it's so lovely. Oh, it's so nice to have a new, very different type of peperomia. This is so green. I love, I love the greenest greens in plants. Um, yeah, that's just beautiful. So this is quite tall and upright. I'm guessing that eventually it'll get to the length of the height that it'll flop over and become trailey, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, right, let's get the wrapping off. Just have to be very careful with that because the, um, the packaging kind of comes in really close to here and I don't want to snip through the plant itself. There's lots of new growth down amongst the bottom of this plant. It's just so green. It's really vibrant and beautiful. There we go. It's free. Isn't that gorgeous? So this one, I know its name, but it's gone out of my head. Let's just check the label. It's 
Peperomia SP Peru. Isn't it so cute? I like how it's got kind of quite subtle, ridgy grooves and the shape of the leaf is so pretty. Kind of like just a gentle little heart or teardrop, quite rounded at the tip, but yeah, it's really lovely. The leaves are quite backlit for me right here, looking through here, which I guess that's a view you're not having. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's really beautiful. It's got kind of maroony stems, especially as the, like nearer the top. It's got some new growth right down here at the bottom there. And this bit's branching out into three. Oh yeah, they've obviously like trimmed or pruned that and then it's branched out into three different bits there. Oh my goodness, this is such a treat. It's beautiful. My um, peperomia area is getting very full. <laughs> so I'm going to have to be creative about how I'm going to fit this in. Because it's really, really, really lovely. That's such a gorgeous one. I'm going to park that somewhere out of the way. So I don't lean on it. Just need some more chocolate at the minute. Oh, that's good. You know when tea is just really hot still? You've got that lovely biting point before it starts to get not quite so hot. And with a bit of chocolate, it's just wonderful. Um, right, so the remaining two are for you. I haven't actually checked which one I've got in my hand. I just pulled one out. Whoa. Well, a bit of soil okay this one is is it chook chowk i'm gonna check the name properly i'm just gonna get the, the stuff off just looking for the bit of uh, paper with its name which i can't see um i will double check the name for you isn't it beautiful it's a really simple beautiful elegant hoya and it's um its leaves are not not as big as some they're not like the teeny, teeny little ones of like my pubera, but they're not like a big, um, like Crimson Queen or um, Pubercalyx. They're kind of medium. I feel like this is a more unusual size of Hoya. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice established plant. It's really, really full. That's lovely. And um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? Five. <laughs> I can't count today. There are five separate vines. Um, and some new growth and some young leaves on the end here. They're quite um, almost like purpley brown and very fuzzy, completely coated in fuzz, very, very soft. I'll take a close up and pop that in for you. But yeah, that's lovely. Oh, and uh, oh my goodness, further up, there are some more little leaves just there. That's really cool. No sign of leaves on the other ones yet. Oh, actually, yeah, there is. On that little short one, there's like a tiny little leaf coming. I'm going to try and find its name for you next. Okay, I was right. It is Chuk. It's a cultivar. Um, so it's Hoya Chuk. I'll put the name on screen so you can see the spelling. I think this is a really, really beautiful plant. It's just so planty. <laughs> it's just... I, I kind of love the plainness of it and the simple shape. I just think it's really elegant. Um, I just love being surrounded by leaves and I I particularly love it when the leaves are just quite plain, like it, it's not overwhelming, it's not too crazily patterned or anything like that. This is just a lovely green, beautiful, elegant plant and I look forward to it either trailing or climbing something. I might um, try and get it on a on a trellis, um, because I haven't really done that with Hoya much, I've only done it with my little um, courtesy eye. Um, yeah, anyway, so there you go, get a good look at that. Um, while you're having a good look at that, I will tell you a bit more about it and how it came into the world. Um, so the man responsible for its creation is called Emilio Beijing. He actually named this after one of his names for his wife, Chuk. Um, and yeah, it was uh, 1995, so he had crossed um, Hoya carnosa and Hoya serpens. Um, and the resultant seed pod split open and there was this and there was Hoya Matilde, so that's its sister plant. Um, Matilde was named after a princess and yeah, this one was named for his, his nickname for his wife. So very lovely. So that's pretty cool. The leaves are not completely flat or smooth. They're quite um, almost like 
um, how do you describe that? Like little raised dots. I will have to put a photo in for you. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. It's so nice to have a different Hoya, um, especially one that I wouldn't necessarily find in any of my local garden centres. So yeah, it's really, really cool. <clears throat> right, last one. I do like a little bite-sized unboxing. I find packaging quite exhausting, partly because I'm always losing my scissors. No idea. Where could they be? will be Hoya Waietii. I know that's a more um, well-known Hoya and a lot of people have it but I have never even seen one in person let alone have one myself. Oh wow this is a really really good mature plant. I'm just going to get the cardboard off it. No let's give you a good look there. Look at that. Right I'm going to get the cardboard off it. I find this bit really tricky. Um, as I said I do struggle to be dexterous sometimes. I find packaging really bleh um, and I just get worried about snipping the plants. I'm just going to do that a sec. I'm getting a lot of uh, soil spill here. But look at that. I'm just gonna slowly remove it. It's gonna it's gonna suddenly flop and dangle, I think. Now that it's free. Whoa, there we go. So this is a 12 centimeter pot, so a really nice mature plant. I didn't quite expect it to be this magnificent though. It is really big and got long vines. Okay. I love this. This is so beautiful. This is so up my street. It's just dangly and long and elegant. So the leaves are really lovely bright green and oh, <laughs> um, you can see there's sort of quite dark edging, like a proper margin around the edge of the leaf there. So I'm guessing that's what happens on the more mature leaves because the younger ones at the tips of the vines don't have that so much. So yeah, there we go. I'm just gonna gently ease the vines kind of to spread them out. I have accepted now that when Hoya arrive looking completely gorgeous and beautiful they might have a bit of a transition where they're not looking quite so good for a while. When I unboxed the pubera from Grow Tropicals, was that back at the beginning of this year, back in January? It was so perfect um, and then it had a lot of um, tips of the vines like browning off and it took a while to settle down um, and I thought I'd really ruined it somehow because I'm new to Hoya um, but yeah it kind of just needed some time and now it's, it's doing really fine I've got new growth on it I've even got a little peduncle which is a first for me um, and yeah I've kind of learned that <laughs> someone someone answered my worries I think it was on Instagram maybe might have been on my channel um, to say don't worry you know Hoya just don't always travel well and they sometimes throw a bit of a hissy fit once they've arrived even though they're in good condition they don't really like the traveling and the knocking around and just the kind of trauma to the vines can make them a bit like oh just not not okay for a minute <laughs> um so I'm just going to be really gentle with this as I kind of try to just let the vines like hang where they want to because they've obviously you know they've been bundled up on top of each other for a little while um, it's actually quite hard to kind of see how they're tangled. There we go. I have a thing where I, I don't really like vines to be tangled up. I kind of, I prefer to kind of spread them out so that they're all like, I don't know, like facing the right, the right edge of the pot rather than crossing over the pot. It, it makes it feel like it's easier to keep track of like condition of the plant and pests and things like that if they're not all piled on top of each other but it is a bit awkward to achieve sometimes this is so beautiful i love it i've actually got to go in a minute because i need to go and do the school run i actually need to go now um 
So I will carry on with this process um, a little bit later. I'm going to give it a shower because I think it's been, you know, it's been treated for things at some point. It's kind of got like remnants of spray stuff um, and just kind of like soil spill, like lots of particles of dusty soil. So it'd be good to get this clean. So it will photosynthesize as efficiently as possible, you know, when it's not covered in dust. Um, and yeah, find some pots for it, see where it's going to be. I will, I would like to keep this one hanging and probably, um, probably put this one on a on a trellis that's just how I feel inclined right now um so yeah all three of these they'll need to find a nice cover pot and decide where they're going to go so um I'll update you on that um later I don't know when I'll be filming that it's not going to be today because school run and dinner and I'm taking my son to his first drumming lesson um bit of a trial to see if he likes that um yeah just a bit of fun really so it's a busy day and yeah I could maybe do that in the evening in the dark not not in the actual dark but I mean it's not going to be beautiful natural daylight like it is now um anyway <laughs> waffle over I will show you these when they are all bedded in and in pots and in place Hello again, it's now a couple of days later. Um, I've had a free moment today between things, so I've just been enjoying finding the right cover pots, uh, raising up the height of the plants if necessary within those pots, giving the plants a nice clean, um, yeah, just showering off all the dirt, um, and putting them in situ. They're all here in my bedroom, so I'm just going to show them to you now. First of all, here's the Hoya Bayetii. It looks probably quite dark to you. Um, there we go, just trying to deal with the fact that it's actually a bit backlit, but there we go um so yeah I've just put it in this little little bedroom window this is a side window I'm terrible at knowing which way we're facing um but yeah it's actually got this little neck curtain which is quite nice for for diffusing the light for the Hoya um as they do like a little bit of shade so not to get scorched it's just here under my hanging um Cissus elendanica which is doing really well I love this plant um so yeah that's where this one is and um I've used um this is a candlestick that I got from uh, the tip actually um, I have a pair of those and they are really handy for for putting for putting plants on especially dangly, dangly plants so yeah that one's hanging nicely now and it's in a it's in a great spot in the window it's kind of not competing too much with any other plants and I think it looks really really nice and I can see it right from the bed so that's lovely the other Hoya the uh CV Chook is just here. I really like this pot. It looks like a kind of brick effect. It's quite glossy, but yeah, I like the pattern, the simple pattern. And um, yeah, it sits really nicely in there. It's currently sitting on top of the um, terrarium that I made at Hutch back in the autumn, um, which works quite nicely as a little pot stand. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really nice there. It's not going to get too much light, but it is hopefully going to get enough light. Um, and it's had a drink, it's had a nice leaf wash, and I think it's looking lovely. I am going to probably put it on a trellis soon, but I didn't have any supplies to make one and I haven't bought one. So that's something I'll do in the coming weeks, I think. Um, in which case it'll have to move because it's under a little shelf. Um, so it might might just change things around and put it up on the shelf, or I might find somewhere else for it to go. But in the meantime, when it is just hanging free, um, that's a lovely spot for it so it's going to be happy there and then the little peperomia sp peru is here in this uh, main window i've got a pair of windows here um they get a lot of natural sunlight um and yeah it's just next to this philodendron gardeniorum is it yeah um so yeah got a little bit of window space there and um i will see about whether this is going to be a good place for it long term it might end up that come like in the middle of summer or even late spring that this is just going to get too much hot sun so i will just keep an eye so it doesn't get too scorched um I currently have filled up my peperomia place so um, I think I need to somehow expand that so for now I do have a few little peperomia um, up in the bedroom with me um, but that's nice I, I do like having them all together but it is nice having a few up here too so that's fine so yeah that's that one just found this little pot which was I think I got this really cheaply in like Lidl quite a few months ago um, with a plant in it that I didn't didn't actually want and I gave that away uh, to someone who, who does like it. It was a succulent um, and I'm not a fan of succulents but I really wanted the pot and it was a really decent price um, and it's, it's just a really handy size, um, sort of smallish medium size. <laughs> um, and I have a pink one too. But yeah, I think it looks quite nice. This dark blue against the bright green leaves. I'm more of a more of a fan of um sort of white or cream or 
pale grey or just very kind of um, muted uh, pale colours for pots because I really like the way they show off the, the greenness of the leaves but occasionally I'll have the odd little little pot that is a contrast to that and I think this one works quite nicely. So, so there we go, I will keep you updated on all these three plants in future videos and let you know how they're doing, how they're growing and hopefully they'll be really happy here. Thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing these plants and um, feel free to tell me about your favourite um, favorite Hoya, favourite uh, Peperomia or just anything you've unboxed lately or anything you feel like sharing thoughts wise or question wise about plants um, or anything. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and um, please give it a thumbs up and uh, follow, uh, blah, 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 follow and <laughs> share and um, all those things and um, <laughs> subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.